Okay, welcome to this um, series of videos where what we're going to do is work through the questions from the SAI Specialist Mathematics exam from 2019. And being the first video, we're going to do question one, which is in part one of the exam paper. So it's in booklet one. And question one was an integration question, and it was broken down into part A and part B, where part A was a partial fraction question, where you get a quotient of polynomials and you write it as a combination of um, quotients of simpler uh, factors. And uh, part B was doing an indefinite integral and then a definite integral in, in part B, uh, part two, uh, based on the, that fraction. So the first thing we need to do is, is show that um, this factorization into partial factors, um, partial factors of the, the left hand side is valid. And because we just need to show this, we don't need to work in any particular direction, so we can choose the direction that is the easiest to work with. And I find with fractions, it's almost always better to go from multiple fractions and put them together as a single fraction than the other way around. It's much simpler. There's usually just one direct way to, to do um, the com combination, whereas when you're breaking it apart, it's a little bit more work. You're not sure exactly where you're going. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the right-hand side. And the right-hand side has got a factor of x minus 2. And so we're going to multiply that by something that will give us uh, x squared minus 4 on the denominator. So what we want is x plus 2. And you can see then our calculation for the denominator is going to be a difference of two squares, x minus 2 times x plus 2, uh, which will give us x squared minus 4. And we have to do the second term as well. It's got x plus 2. And so we're going to multiply that by x minus 2 to get the same result. Okay, and we can see then what we end up with is x plus 2 over x squared minus 4. And the second term is going to be x minus 2 over x squared plus, uh, sorry, minus 4. Okay, so that's given us um, most of what we need. Now you can see that when we look at the denominators, oh sorry, the numerators, we've got uh, x minus x, that goes to 0. And we've got 2 minus minus 2, and that goes to 4. So our numerator goes to 4. Our denominator is going to go to x squared minus 4 still, because uh, they're common to both of those fractions. And what we're left with is the left-hand side. So this is what we needed to show. And so we can just comment that that's equal to the left-hand side, and that's all we need to do to, to finish that question. So we've shown that the um, 4 over x squared minus 4 is equal to 1 over x minus 2 minus 1 over x plus 2. Okay, so if we look at the next uh, part of the question, what we're going to do is an indefinite integral. Okay, there's no limits on this integral, and the integrand is 1 over x squared minus 4. Okay, so it's important to just be aware here we've got a 1. Okay, if we go back to question part A, question 1A, we've got a 4 here. So we want to make sure that we don't forget about that when we do the, the calculation. And here we're going to work from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, because they want us to show that it, uh, a certain integral works. And so uh, the left-hand side, in this case, um, we're going to write this as a quarter, that takes care of the 4, of the integral of the x minus 2 minus 1 over x plus 2 dx, which is from part a. Okay, so that's breaking, um, broken that uh, fraction up into simpler fractions that we can then work out the integrand um, more easily. Now, the integral, I should say, more easily. Now, you can see that with this particular integral, we've got an integrand now that um, are just terms of 1 on a linear term. And functions like 1 on x will integrate into the natural logarithm, the absolute value of the thing on the, numerator, on the denominator. Like the integral of uh, 1 over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x. So in this case, um, our x's have still got a coefficient of 1, so nothing's really going to change here. We're just going to get an uh, absolute value. Um, so if we leave the quarter there, we're going to put in a bracket because it's multiplying both of these terms. We're going to have the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2 minus the natural log of the absolute value x plus 2. And because it's an indefinite integral, we're going to have a constant of integration as well. So we've done the integral. Um, we're going to make sure we put in that constant of integration to make sure that our, our answer is sufficiently general. And now the last thing we need to do just to get to the right-hand side of what's given in the question is use a property of the log function, which is that if you're subtracting two log uh, functions, then it's the same as taking the log of the quotient of the two arguments. 
Uh, so the first argument divided by the second argument, and so we can write this as a quarter natural log absolute value x minus 2, x plus 2. And we still have that constant of integration, and that's the right-hand side. Okay, so that's all we needed to do. Um, using the information in that first question, so when, you, when they group uh, material together into questions, what you'll find often is that the questions relate to one another. And so with this particular question, it was made a lot easier by, by leveraging the result from part A, okay, which was fairly obvious because we could see that the integrand was pretty much um, the same as the, the left-hand side of part A, with just that factor of four to take care of. Okay, so with uh, part two of this part B, what we uh, asked to do here is to work out a definite integral. So in this case, in the previous case, there were no there were no limits. Now we've got a limits here on our integral. Okay, so we're going to use the the integral that we just did because it's the it's the same integrand as in part one. And so the exact value of this this integral from zero to one, one over x squared minus four dx, is going to be equal to a quarter. That's just a multiplicity of constants. So we can take that outside, and you. Um, really part that depends on x is going to be a term that looks like the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2 over x plus 2. And we need to evaluate that at the two boundaries at um, the limit of x equals 1 and the limit of x equals 0. Now when we substitute those values in, we're going to get the natural log of the absolute value. We put 1 into here, we're going to get 1 minus 2 which is minus 1 and uh, 1 plus 2 is 3 and the lower limit will give us um, 0 minus 2 over uh, plus 2. Okay so it's the absolute value of a third, uh, minus a third I should say, and the absolute value of minus 1. Now the absolute values is just going to remove the minus sign so it's going to be the log of a third less the log of 1 so if you like, we can write that down. Um, log of a third minus natural log of one. And now the natural log of one is equal to zero. Okay, that's just a factor of the log function. Log of um, any, any uh, number raised to the power um, zero will give you a one, any non-zero number. And so um, the log of, in just about any base of one is going to be equal to zero. So that, that gets rid of the second term there. And with the first term, we can simplify that slightly because um, three is equal to, sorry, a third is equal to three to the minus one. Okay, so we can write this as ln three to the minus one. And we can take that minus one outside, so we get minus a quarter ln three. That's another factor, a function of the, um, or property of the log function. Okay, and so that's the exact answer for that log. You can't you can't get it any more exact than that. The the natural log of the number three is not going to be something you can write down exactly. It's going to be a an infinite string of of um, decimal digits, and so uh, we will just leave it in that form there. Okay, so that finishes um, question one. So I'm going to finish the video here. Yeah, if you enjoyed the video, then you can always like it. Um, if you've got any questions or suggestions, then make comments down below. Um, and if you want to see when I'm producing new videos, say when I'm doing the other questions, or if you've got some ideas and you want me to do videos in some other um, areas, like maybe some thematic, thematic videos on particular parts of the curriculum, then uh, you can also leave comments below uh, for that as well. And if you subscribe, you can, you'll can you um, get notified when these new videos are made. All right, thanks very much, and uh, we'll stop this video here.